I'm going to go ahead and record this meeting. So yes, please put your name in the chat box. Also in the chat box is a file that I've added a couple times. You only need to download it once. It is our agenda for today. So with us today, we have the great Leslie Tahara, um, who is in charge of the shinding. She's done a great <laughs> job putting that on. <laughs> also from our DE team, we have Ana Figueroa, who is going to be moderating the chat room. Um, and she's my co-pilot. I couldn't run this show without her. So we're very happy to have you all today. So this is our agenda. I will say that most of this was stolen from the great Cyrus Health, which I'm sure many of you know, and our DE office wouldn't be possible without him and Hadi either. So I just wanted to kind of give credit where credit is due. So these are sort of the things that we're going to cover today. If you have any questions, um, go ahead and put them in the chat. Anna will answer them and or you can raise your hand and I'll try and see if I can get to them as well. So before we get started though, is there anything burning that you want to know about um, that you just need to know how to figure out to do? Anybody? I had a question about the- uh, Burning, <laughs> a lot of stuff. <laughs> the, uh, as, um, um, the ADA, the accessibility checker, Yes. Yeah, I yes. it yeah, for the first half of my class from the summer class, it like prompted me with the little those little uh the little clocks to show me like if it's if it's great or not. But my last week or so that hasn't popped up. So I'm wondering if that's something I have to recheck on or I have to re-click on, or I just don't understand why it hasn't been uh being accessible for the last uh, week or so. It's because it went away, sadly. Oh, we that's what that email was about. <laughs> that email was regarding that. Yeah. that was, Wow. Yeah, okay. it went away. And we'll talk about some of the alternatives that we can use um, in during this webinar. And also there is another webinar that Hadi is doing on Pope Tech, which is sort of an interim replacement. But we'll talk about that more. Okay. Cool. But great question. Anybody else have a burning question they want to make sure I answer? Uh, why is the welcome for peer students and not for all students? Oh, so because I am a district admin, if you look mm -hmm. over here, I've got the district admin. I kind of get everybody's emails, uh, uh, announcements. And so I left this up because I wanted to show you guys how to manage global announcements. And so that's why. So I get Pierce's, I get all the different schools because I'm a, a, a district admin. Um, you guys should only be getting the ones from West and the district, but I wanted to use this as but an often, example. Often mm -hmm. when I open mine, I do have for trade and for others, and I'm only working at West. I never worked in any other. Yeah, it depends on how they send it. So they can either send it just to their school or they can send it to the entire district. Mm -hmm. So it really just depends on how it's sent is, is, is my estimation on that. But that is a great segue. Did I start the recording? I believe I did. All right. So I don't promise to be nearly as funny as Cyrus nor as good looking, but I will try. Um, so the first thing, <laughs> and you know, Cyrus is Canadian, whoever doesn't know, and they're just the nicest people ever. I'm from New York, which is the opposite of a Canadian. So <laughs> I will really, really, really try to wow you guys with my New York charm, but you know, no promises. All right, I, so the first I thing that- I understand New York. Yes, we're, we're really, really, really hardcore. And what's really interesting is that I went back there this past summer and people still say I'm very New Yorkish, right? Um, out in California, but I went to New York and I was like, man, you people are just rude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> what would people in California think of you? So I'm kind of halfway in between. I've got one foot in California, one foot in New York. I don't right. quite belong anywhere anymore, but Yes, you I do. tried. You, you belong with us. Okay. <laughs> did you, All did right. you did you come yeah. back saying coffee? <laughs> oh Deanna, say, yes. say say water, W A T E R. Water. <laughs> they get me on water and also three because I'm Puerto Rican. So I cannot say three. My kids think that's the funniest thing. They'll be like, I have three kids. They're like, it's not three, mom. It's not three. <laughs> yeah. So 
Yeah, I definitely from uh, New York. All right, so first we're gonna start with uh, Canvas management. And so as you guys can tell, I am in my Canvas uh, shell. I'm gonna make it a little smaller, but a little, but not so small that you guys can't see. So guys, can you guys see that well? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the first thing that you see up here as somebody noticed is this announcement. Um, and this is what we call global announcements. And as you notice, you can either get them from your school, sometimes they come from other schools, sometimes they come from the district. And they're meant to kind of capture your attention and or the student's attention and, you know, give them some important information. In this instance, they've sent out their welcome letter as a global announcement. I actually emailed all of you guys uh, our welcome letter template. So you should see that in your email. Um, it is attached and so you can customize that and send that to your students, but that's kind of what they are communicating here. So what's um, nice about this is it's a nice way to get information across to either students or faculty, but it does kind of uh, muddy up your dashboard and make it difficult to access your courses. So you can get rid of these global announcements by clicking on the little checkbox, which is right here in the top. Um, let's see, Cyrus told me I could do something for, nope, can't do that. So up here in the top right, over here with this uh, little checkbox, if I close that, it will dismiss my global announcements. And you can see Canvas is really good about giving you messages. So it says you can view this dismissed announcement by going to account and selecting global announcements from the menu. So what's nice is that once you close this global announcement, it isn't gone forever. If you wanna see Kevin, hey, what did I really see about that ally announcement that came out uh, about two weeks ago? You can click on account and scroll down here to global announcements and you can click and see what that was. And so I have quite a few because I am, uh, like I said, a district admin, but here is that global announcement and it says ally access accessibility tool being removed Friday, August 6th. So again, to do that, you're gonna go to accounts, global announcements, and you're able to see current announcements as well as the announcements that have been sent previously. So that's just how you get to see global announcements. Again, they can be sent by the district. Does anybody have questions on that? Um, there aren't any questions yet. Okay, great. So now that I've gotten rid of my announcement, here is my dashboard. And you guys should be really familiar with your dashboard. Um, this is where we get all of our courses. And I'm gonna show you how to change the picture in your dashboard, as well as how to sort of move these things around um, manage them and the like. So I'm gonna go into this class, that this course that I created for our um, webinar, Canvas Tips and Tricks. And we're gonna go ahead and click in the course. And if I click all the way down at the bottom and click on settings, it will take me to the settings page. And this is where I can add a course image. So I wanna click on choose image and I can drop and drag um, an image that's either on my computer, if I have got one already here, or I can choose one um, using something called Unsplash. And so Unsplash is just the repository for images. And so let's say I want to find something that's going to you know, let us know we're doing some tricks here. So let's go ahead and, I don't know, let's pick this one. So there you go. If you're going to do your own image, if you're really handy with like Photoshop or something, make sure your images should be about 262 by 146 pixels to get this optimal um, vision. Uh, and if I wanted to remove that, I could remove it or replace it with the image. So again, we're gonna go to settings and then right up here, choose image. And I will allow that to display on my dashboard. So when I go back, I scroll down here, there's my little nifty course with my tips and tricks. Any questions on that one? Yeah, what was the uh, the optimal uh, size again you said, uh, 246? Uh, sure, it is on the agenda, but it's 262 by 146. Okay, thank you. Yeah, 262 by 146. All right, so that is great. Now let's take a look at 
um, communicating via the inbox. So the inbox is really a nifty way that we can communicate with our students. I am always amazed when I see instructors inboxes and they've got like a hundred inboxes. I'm like, oh, that will just stress me out so much. So I try and answer um, my emails every day. As you see, I've got one from last night and one from this morning. But in this blue, this blue navigation, this is our global navigation, you will find the inbox. And if you want to, you can sort the inbox by courses. So let's say I wanted to see all of my message from students in a particular course. I can select that course and it will show me just that course. And I find this helpful, let's say you have 20 emails. If you wanna go through course by course, you can select the messages by course and that way you're not flipping back um, from course to course and it makes it easy to manage your messages from students. Another thing that I like to do is um, send emails to all of my students. So how you do that is you're going to click on this little compose a, a, a new message and you're gonna choose the course. So again, you've got the favorite courses. These are the courses and I'll show you how to favorite courses in a minute or all of the courses that you have. So let's just go ahead and choose this uh, business course. And when I click on the little people on the right hand side, it should give me the list of students who are in this course. Assuming students have been, there it is. Okay, so if I have, diff I have different groups, I've got teachers or students. And for this instance, I wanna choose students. So I can choose an individual student or I can select all in students. And this is going to send a message to all my students. So this is really super helpful if you guys want to send the welcome message that I gave you guys uh, today in your email. This would be a great way to do that. And you would just type welcome message. Um, one important thing that I want to note, do you guys see this little box right here where it says send an individual message to each recipient. If you are messaging more than one student, I recommend you check that box because when they reply all, I mean, they only see your reply. They don't see that you actually reply to other students or you sent the message to other students. So I like to send this because it appears as though you sent them and only them a message. And then when they reply, they're not going to be replying back to all the classmates. So I would simply copy and paste my text here or attach it as a document and then click on done. So that's a really good way to get your welcome message out. You also can send it in the SIS and those instructions are in the email itself. Um, but this is a very good way to communicate with your students. Any questions on the inbox? Um, there are no questions in the chat. All right, let's get back to the dashboard really quickly before we actually get into the course and look at course management. One other thing that I wanted to show you on this left-hand side, this is your to-do list. And so you can see all of the assignments. I am an instructor because I'm an instructor. My to-do list has to do with things that I need to grade. Um, and these, I have all of these assignments to grade, but most of them are just one assignment because I opened up an assignment for students before the class ended or whatever the case may be. So for students, they're also going to see this to-do list, but it's going to have the assignments that are due for them in the courses that they're enrolled. And so this is really helpful because it gives you a nifty kind of like, hey, you need to kind of do these things before it's too late. So I like that to-do list, but also if you click on these three little dots in the top right, you will see that you have different dashboard views. And I'm sure people really don't pay too much attention to this. We're just used to seeing our courses in what we call this card view. So it's kind of like a list of cards. But if you go to list view, it will actually list all of your courses in a list as opposed to a um, like a card view. This is not really um, my favorite because I have so many classes. So I'll go back to the card view. And then the other option that we have is, is recent activity. And so this is going to show you things that are going on in your classrooms. And so I've got four announcements and 16 discussions. Um, the last thing that I wanna show you if we go back to card view is this color overlay. So for people who are visual, uh, people, you can choose a color. You can color code your classes by clicking on these three dots and selecting a course. And if you want each one of these courses, because you see all of my business classes have the same image, but I want to differentiate between them, right? I want to know which one is 
uh, you know, business 31 versus business one. So I can add a different color by selecting a color and then checking this color overlay option over here. And that's going to give me the image and the color. So that's also a neat little trick to help keep you organized. The very, very last thing that I wanna show you is that if you notice, Canvas this um, divides your dashboard by published courses and unpublished courses. So here are my unpublished courses. And as you can see, I've got all my fall classes. They're currently unpublished. And here is my Canvas tips and tricks shell that we're going to be working in. One of the nice things about Canvas, the dashboard, is that you can actually publish your course from here. And you can also um, move your, uh, your courses, your course cards around. So I can either move it up, move it down, move it to the left, right? Move to the top. So that's just really kind of neat to be able to kind of move things around in addition to changing the colors, but I also can publish this as well. And so now I'm going to publish it. It's going to say, hey, before you publish it, you don't really have a homepage. What do you want the homepage to be? I'm just going to go ahead and click on, um, let's see, course activity stream because I don't have any content in there yet. So it can't choose a page and or uh, a module yet. So we're going to click on publish. And so you'll see now that uh, card has moved from unpublished all the way up here to published. Okay. So any questions on the canvas management and how we can kind of get around our courses before we actually get into the course itself? Nope. All right. Diana, okay. there's no um, question, but someone um, did post something, the list view um, is also a great um, option for students because it allows them to see clearly um, what is due for which course. And, and this is Michelle. You're absolutely right. It probably is more helpful for students. You're absolutely right. I have 18,000 courses, so it, it looks a little daunting from my perspective, but I absolutely believe for a student, it would be very helpful. That's a great point. All right, so we are going to go into our Canvas tips and tricks module, which I've created for this webinar. And our next segment, we're gonna talk about course management. So one of the first things that we need to do when we start a new term, if we've taught a course before, is to go ahead and import our content from other courses. So we are coming up on the fall next week. And if you're like me and you haven't gotten your shelves ready yet, um, because you've just been working on so many other things, that might be something that you need to do this week. Well, what's really nice about Canvas is that it allows you to transfer courses from semester to semester. And you can either transfer the entire course, you can transfer portions of the course, and you can either change the dates or remove the dates completely. So this is a really neat feature um, in Canvas, and it makes it easy to uh, import uh, classes from semester to semester. So I'm going to click on the home and on the right hand side over here, I'm going to click on import existing content. Now I will warn you because I have so many classes and also because I have district access. Um, this is going to be a lot of classes. So I'm going to actually need to search by my section number, which is 11157. So, all right, we're going to go to import existing content and then under content type, I'm going to copy a Canvas course. And this is where you're going to search for the course. For normal people who only have their courses, you can put business one or whatever the case may be. But if I put business one, I will have, you know, 1500 classes available to me, right? Because I have all of these courses. So we're not going to do that. I'm going to just go ahead and put the section number. So this will sort of narrow it down. Here's my section number and I can see this is the course that I want, this intro to business. And I'm going to actually select specific content. I don't want to um, select the entire course, but I'm going to select specific content. And I'm also going to adjust the dates, okay? Um, you have two choices when you adjust the dates. You can either shift the dates or you can remove them completely. I'm gonna shift the dates um, 
in all actuality, if I were doing this in real life, I probably would remove the dates because we're going from five weeks in the summer to 16 weeks. But for our purposes, let's go ahead and shift the dates just to make things easy. So the first thing you're gonna do is put the beginning date, which was, I think second session started July 9th, 19th. Anybody have a different answer for that? No, 19th. All right, and it ended on yesterday, just last night, right? And so I would change this to the new semester start date, which is going to be August 30th. And we're going to go until, I think we go until December 19th, right? So this is assuming I'm copying from 16 week semester to 16 week semester. Um, it would roll over your assignments. It would change the due dates. Everything would be pretty much the way it needs to be. That doesn't mean you, that you don't need to go in and double check, but this is kind of something that I would do from semester to semester. So when I go to import my courses, I likely will import them from the last spring. So I do spring to spring and then summer to winter. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on import. Remember, I imported some data, not all of the data. If I selected all data, that's all I would have to do. It would go and I would be done. But because I just want some of the data, I'm gonna go ahead and click on select content. And so what I wanna do is I wanna select the syllabus and I'm going to click on some of these getting started modules, orientation modules that I have for my students. So that's kind of all I really want. Um, one of the things about this is that you kind of also have to bring over the corresponding, like let's say there are quizzes in here. I need to make sure I'm bringing the right quizzes. So I'm bringing a syllabus quiz, right? And so that means that in this module, I happen to know in this class orientation or getting started module, I happen to know I have a syllabus quiz. So I'm gonna click on syllabus, but I also need to grab the question bank for the syllabus quiz. And this is really important. I see a lot of calls come into Canvas where people are importing content and they're like, my questions didn't come over in the quiz. Well, if you import a quiz, you have to make sure you import the corresponding question banks if you created the quiz with the question bank. Not all quizzes have question banks, but if you do, you need to make sure you copy them over. Now, if um, you're Tiana? copying the entire, Tiana? yes. Before you move on, we have a question from Su Susan Trujillo. Yes. Um, her question is, is it possible to import a single assignment from a previous course to a current course? Yes, this is exactly what we're doing. So if I just wanted an assignment, I would close module. And instead of, let's close all this stuff. Um, I would close all of this stuff and I would just click on assignment and I would find the particular assignment that I want. So I would open the assignment box. Let's say it's this assignment, the set your notification preferences. That is the only thing that I wanna copy. I'm gonna set it up the same way. I'm gonna import can Canvas content from another course. I'm gonna select specific content and I'm only going to choose the one assignment that I want. And I would click on select content and that would be done. Does that answer your question, Susan? Yes, it does. Thank you. I, I had posted the question several minutes ago before you started demonstrating. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. So one of the, um, the nice things to note, we were talking about quizzes in particular, because I do see a couple of calls into um, Canvas where people are like, oh, my Canvas quiz didn't come in. As I was trying to say, you need to make sure that you import the corresponding question banks. However, if you are moving all of the content from one class to another, you don't have to worry about this. Everything is gonna come over. So you don't have to worry about making sure you're selecting everything that you need. So as I said, we're gonna go back to my first three modules. Um, so there's my first three modules. I happen to know in terms of assignments, I've got a set your notification assignment, your meet your uh, classmate and introduce yourself assignment. So you kind of have to know what's in there. Um, Right? 
that's sort of the drawback when you're picking things, you have to be selective. The part that you really wanna pay attention to is making sure you're bringing those uh, question banks in if you're bringing quizzes, okay? Um, and you also wanna bring the pages over that are in those modules. So I happen to know that a lot of these pages are going to be in those modules. So you wanna find the pages that are there as well. And so you might be asking, why can't I just import the modules? And I'm gonna do just that, just to show you guys, because some of the stuff will come over properly and some of them, some of it won't. So we're gonna do sort of like an experiment. So you'll see what comes over if I just bring the modules and what doesn't come over. So those are my three modules. I'm not selecting anything else. And I'm gonna explain to you at the end of this why you need to go back and make sure you're selecting the right thing. All right, so it is queued up. What does that mean? This means this is an internal process that needs to happen in Canvas. And I wanna caution you guys, for those of you who like to wait to the last minute, so maybe you're like Sunday night, you know, getting those classes together, it will take a lot longer because there are a lot of instructors who will be working on their classes Sunday night. So if you're going to be exporting uh, content, maybe do it earlier in the week. So it'll be rather quick, but this can be up to an hour or two hours if, you know, usage is high at Canvas. So it's really important to understand that. All right, any questions? Nope. Let's take a look and see what we got. All right, all right. So here are the three modules. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, let's see. There is a question from uh, Vera. Yeah, in the chat. Is there a way to transfer announcements? Because yes. the problem is like, I don't want the students to see any of the announcements until I post them. And yes, sure. When you are doing the um, import course content, mm -hmm. instead of choosing module, I would just choose announcements and you can shift the dates or you can add dates to the actual announcements if there aren't dates there already. So let me show you if I but go wait, if to, I remove the dates, they won't be visible to the students. I, I don't want them to be visible ahead of time. That's what my problem. I'm going to show you. Okay. So let's go ahead and remove the dates just for our purposes. Okay. Um, sorry. What? I, we needed to copy a Canvas course, right? 115157. Specific content. We're going to remove the date. Import. Search for a course. Where'd it go? Why is it not working? 11157. There it is. Sorry. So there's the course. I'm going to click on import. So this time, instead of importing modules, I'm going to import announcements. And as you see, I've got quite a few announcements. I'm gonna go ahead and select those three and bring those over. And I'll show you how I can give them dates so that they are published when I want them to be, as opposed to being available immediately, okay? So my announcements are there. When I click on this first announcement, this welcome to business one, Let's go ahead and click on edit. And down below, there is a button called delayed posting. So when I delay posting, I can choose a date. So if I want this to post on the 30th at 8 a.m., that will give me the opportunity to do that, okay? So I'm gonna click on save. And then my next announcement for the following week, which is gonna be week two, I'm going to do, sorry, Week you know, two, I'm, I'm, go I'm gonna have that post the week after. No, I understand that, but I was hoping to have something um, easier that, you know, all the announcements are there, but I go and in that day that I wanna post it, then I post it, you know, not, not like in advance doing delay because then I have to anticipate. Sometimes I change, you know, what I write depend on oh. something that we did or, you know, as it's not, yeah, unfortunately, there's no way to like not 
publish announcement. So what I tend to do for my announcements, if I don't know what specific day that I want to use it, I will delay the post till sometime after the class, right? So mm -hmm. I'll put it maybe like December 31st. That way you have I know. To go one, one by one, you have to do it? Well, no, you can do it in a just all. You can do it, you know, some other ways. We'll, we'll take a look at those later. Okay. Yeah, there are other ways that you can do it, but. So you I've done that, Deanna. I've done that, and then I've kind of forgotten about it. And then my students get, you know, all these announcements like after the class. Yeah. Yet, is there? Yeah. What do you do then at the end of the class? How do you do? You delete the announcement, or what do you do so they don't get late announcements that you didn't intend to send? So when you're setting up the course, if you click on under, it's not here because it's this is a development course. So here it is: start date and end date. So when you're setting up your course, your start date and end date, if you click on restrict students from viewing the course before or after the end date, that may take care of that. Hey, thank you. Yeah, that may take care of that. All right, so importing content from one semester to another. Oh, we were gonna double back and see what came over in our modules and what didn't. So. As you can see, my pages are all here. That's great. Sometimes, however, some, sometimes the images don't come over. So that's not always the best thing. Um, it can be finicky, so you might have to look around. But what I really wanna show you is the syllabus quiz. Let's see if the questions came over. Oh, they did. We got lucky. All right. Well, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So just know that if it doesn't work, you might have to go back and reset it. But it seems like it worked that time. All right. Any questions about copying content from one semester to another? I, I do have a question. Mm -hmm. When I try to go on a previous lesson, it tells me I'm not authorized to do that. When you try to go to a previous semester of a course that you've taught? Yes. Hmm, that's really interesting. I've never heard of anything like that, but you can call the distance learning office. Um, Anna will put the phone number and the chat box, I mean, the email in the chat. And so you can either call Canvas directly for support or you can call our office and we can help you with kind of one-off issues like that. Okay, thank and, you. Yeah, the um, Canvas support number we'll go over later, but it's also on the agenda. All right. For the announcements, always a copy and paste all my announcements there and then save them somewhere else, like a Word document or a notepad, and then I can always retailer it when I paste it into the new class. That was oh. kind, of, kind of my way of trying to keep, keep the announcements transferable, but I like the method you use where you can actually go into the options menus and be able to transfer those, uh, those announcements also, so that's healthier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> makes life a lot, a lot easier what i found is that when you when you can like get your course management down then it allows you more time to like interact with the students and respond to their emails and like actually get to the teaching of things as opposed to the administrating of things so yeah. i try and make things run kind of as automated as possible so that i can just spend more time with the students and then also have a question about the syllabus there. Do you, do you allow the students to view the syllabus before the class begins? I do. So as a habit, I didn't import the syllabus, but as a habit, I, I will actually go in and um, publish my syllabus if I'm really doing great a week ahead of time, but most likely it's usually two or three days ahead of time. Okay, so that I, I actually, yeah, I actually will publish the syllabus as well as these orientation modules okay. right so it's kind of like i have them in orientation if you're new to canvas i give them a class orientation much like we would the first day of class and then i've got this sort of getting started which tells you like what do you need to do to actually get started so i like to open these ahead of time because it gives them you know first of all students are anxious it's like the first day of school it's like let me do something so it gives them something to chew on but it also ensures that they look at it right because if the content is open they're going to pay attention to the content and they're not paying attention to my orientations at all so yeah. i do like to to open these a couple of days early just to kind of get them started so they are familiar with the class so when our class starts they know what they're doing 
Okay, because I always get I always get like two or three students that want the syllabus. Like, hey, I got emails today. Can I have the syllabus? I'm like, uh, I want to, but uh, he's got to wait till Friday, like everybody else. There, yeah, so um, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm I always, gauge. yeah, I always try and give them a, a couple something, you know, a couple days ahead, just to kind of get them started. Um, Nancy, to answer your question, which is. Uh, is it permissible to bring the entire course? That's actually what I do. I bring my entire course over. I delete assignments that I'm not going to be using. Um, I will retweak announcements. I will retweak, you know, my home pages. So that way, I'm not missing anything because I find if you start picking and choosing things that you're bringing over, maybe some links won't work. Sometimes Canvas won't bring over images. This time it worked perfectly, but I've brought over stuff and it didn't bring the, the images over. So now I've got broken image links. It didn't bring the quiz banks over. So now my quizzes don't work. And so I like to just bring everything over and just go ahead and delete what it is that I don't need. Um, uh, Bernice, you had a question. Yes, I do. And if I missed your response to this, forgive me for doing a little bit of multitasking, but it sounds like your work, work, this would be appropriate for what you're talking about now. One of the things that I've had problems with in terms of syllabus is not the syllabus, but getting making sure people really read what's on there. And I do know that people have students, you know, sign, do a thing where you can't move on until you have done X, Y, or Z, such as read yes. the syllabus. I do not know how to do that. And if that's appropriate for now, I'd be delighted to, to see you do that. Sure, we are actually gonna talk about that when we get some module open dates and requirements. So we are okay. definitely there in course management. Right now, um, we're, we're just we're finishing. We're gonna get uh, to it and I'll just be patient and wait. Thank you very much. We're gonna get to it. So Thank next you. up is how to send, uh, set your announcements to be on your homepage. So we all know students don't always read the announcements that we send them. So one nice thing that I like to do is have my announcements posted on my homepage. And the way in which you do that is you can click on settings. And then if you scroll all the way down at the bottom and you click on this more options, it allows students to show the number of announcements on uh, your homepage. And I like to do this, especially if I'm letting them know, hey, your assignment's due on Friday, you know, or, or you know, you need to turn in this um, quiz, right? And so the first three assignments are going to show up. And so that's how you kind of do that. And then you're going to click on update course details. So I like to do that because students don't always read the announcements, but they will have access to it there. All right. Next up is organizing course navigation. So as you can see, this is a course that is brand new. We just started it. And so it's got all of my links available with the exception of outcomes. And I can tell because there's a little eye there with a cross. And that's not actually really helpful for students because in this case, more is not better. So I like to streamline my navigation, which is in this little, um, these blue links, so that students only have what they need. And in order to do that, you're gonna click on navigation, you're gonna to scroll to the bottom and you'll see there are two banks of links. There's the one on top, it's separated by this little note that says drag items to hide from students. And then there's the more um, links down below. And so basically what you wanna do is drag stuff that you're not going to be using in your course. So all of these are things that I, I like to hide quizzes because I put my quizzes in the modules, same with rubrics, outcomes. I like to keep it really simple. I take away pages and I'm literally just dropping and dragging so that they don't have access to these things, right? Unless there's group assignments, there's no need for them to see the people tags. I even like to hide the assignments because I just want them to go through the modules. We all have those students who will just click on the assignments. They'll do the assignments for that week and they've never bothered to teach the reading, to touch the reading, right? So I like to hide all of the things that they you know, don't need to have access to. Um, and so I like to have the home on top, uh, maybe syllabus is next, we'll put modules, announcements, and then these are support, you know, that they can use. And if you don't use them in your courses, you can drag them down below. But this is sort of like a streamlined version of what I would have 
for my students. So as you can see, and now instead of having 20 different links, I've got about 10 or so. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on save. So as you can see now on my menu, I've gone from all of those being available to only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten, 10 or 12 being available. And all of these other ones are hidden. And as I mentioned, you can tell that they're hidden because they have an eye, right? So that's a really cool way to keep your students um, on the right path, right? And I like to put everything in the modules because I think of it as like breadcrumbs. I want you to read the content first, and then I want you to do the discussion. I want you to take the quiz next, and then I want you to do the assignment. So when I order my modules, I can put everything in the way in which I want the students to follow those breadcrumbs. And this is um, one way that helps me to do that by changing my navigation. All right, any questions there? Nope. One last thing that I'm going to show you in the settings menu before we go over to answer uh, Bernice's question. This is the validate links and content, which is over here on the right hand side. Now, I have to tell you, this is something that I use every semester in every class. And basically what it does when you click on it, you get this big blue button. It says start link validation. What it's doing is it's searching every link in your course for any links that are invalid, unreachable, or any images that didn't come over. And this is really, really important because you don't want students coming into your class, you know, looking for things and they can't find it or the links don't work or images don't work, right? You wanna make sure you've got everything that you need. So I like to do the course link validator right before I publish my course. And I will tell you, I've seen 135 broken links, like you can really have a lot and then you'll have to go in and fix each one of those. Um, but oftentimes it's something, you know, manageable like 20 or 30 broken links and it'll tell you where the link is and what the broken link is and you can go to the page and fix it. So that's also something that I find really, really helpful. We're gonna come back to that because it does take us a little bit of time to run. And in the meantime, we're going to answer Bernice's question. So I'm gonna click on the modules tab. And as you can see, I've got three modules. These are my orientation modules. And I like to make this Canvas orientation. It says, if you're new to Canvas, you should take this orientation. It just tells them how to use Canvas on their mobile phone or how to you know, use the global navigation, right? Um, but it's not required because a lot of our students have taken Canvas before, so they don't have to really pay attention if they know how to use it. But I have this class orientation and it is required. And as you can see over here on the right hand side is a little note that says complete all items. And I'll show you how I got that note. And the same thing for my getting started, complete all items. So when you're setting up your module, there's a couple of settings that you can change. You can click on edit and you can lock it to a specific day. So I don't know if it was you, Kevin, who asked if you could lock this or maybe it was Lori or somebody else, but basically you can lock the modules. And so if I don't want this module to open until the day before class or two days before class, I can lock it until then. So that's really helpful. I actually wind up setting up my 16 week course at one time. And I literally just lock the modules week by week. They unlock every single week. That way I don't have to go in every Sunday and remember to set up my classes and have my modules um, uh, published. So I publish everything, but I lock them. That way it's automated. Now, so that's the lock date but you also can add requirements and you can add completion requirements and you can also add prerequisite requirements. So let's take a look. If I click on requirements, I have two options. The first one is they must complete all of these requirements and I can check the box that says they must move through these requirements in a sequential order, or I can say students must complete one of the requirements, right? So it's kind of like if I want them to just do one of the five pages, right? And they can either view the item, mark it as done, or contribute to that page. So what do I want them to do while they're there? So this is the requirement and there's no prerequisite because this is the first module. 
right? So I'm gonna show you the prerequisite when we get to a different module. So let's just say um, for this one, I don't want either, right? I don't want them to, I don't want it to be a requirement because like I said, some students have already um, used Canvas before, but I do want it to have a date. So we're gonna update it with that. For the prerequisites, this is where I'm gonna come over. I'm gonna click on the three dots. Somebody has a question? All right, and click on edit. So we've got the lock date. We have the requirements like we had before, but now I also have prerequisites. I didn't have prerequisites in the last one, okay? And so when you add a prerequisite, you can choose the module that comes before. It has to be a module that comes before. So if I wanted students to have to do the orientation module, I could select it here. And I'm actually not going to do that because as I said, the orientation module is optional, but I do have that I want them to complete all of the items. And I want them to go in a sequential order because these need to go in a sequential order, right? And what do I want them to do? I want them to view it. And so for each one of the items that are in the module, I've listed what I want them to do, right? And then I click on update. And that's where this complete the, ob the all items comes into play. On this module, I'm gonna show you how to add the prerequisite because let's say I do want the class orientation to be a prerequisite to getting started. So I'm gonna click on my three dots again. I'm gonna click on add prerequisite. This time I've got two choices for the module. I can choose the Canvas orientation module or the class orientation module. Basically any module that comes before is what's going to be listed there. And in this instance, I want the class orientation to be the prerequisite. Again, I also want students to complete the items. Um, in this instance, I just want them to complete this one page, which is, uh, which is how does this class work? And I want them to view the item. If I wanted to add additional, I wanted them to submit the assignment, right? Submit the quiz, I could do that as well. Whatever assignments or requirements you want them to do, you can add that. And then I would click on um, update module. So this is sending me a message. It's saying, hey, your requirements have changed. Um, do you want us to relock the module, right? And I'm gonna say, yes, I want them to relock the module. So now you'll notice in addition to the complete all items icon, I also have prerequisite class orientation required as a little note there. So what this is telling the students is that you have to do this class orientation before you can even have access to this getting started required module. Now, as a matter of speaking, I'll give you my personal opinion. Students, for whatever reason, cannot necessarily always figure this out. And so I get more emails telling me, oh, I can't access week number one because I will have these as prerequisites before week number one. I can't access week number one. I couldn't do my assignment. And it's because they're not reading the pages where I tell them they have to click through the orientation or whatever. So I tend to not use prerequisites for that reason. However, if it's something that you're inclined to do, that's how you get it done. Any questions? Thank you. All right. How are we doing on time? Um, it is now 3.23 um, and there are no questions in the chat. And we go to four, right? Uh, about 3.50, I believe. 3.50, great, got it. All right, so we're moving from course management to content management. This is where we get to the good part, right? This is how I actually get content into my page. And to let's, let's go ahead and <clears throat> create a new module. We're gonna call this one test. And in the module, I'm going to create a new page because I wanna show you guys how to add videos and images to our pages in Canvas. And this would be the same for discussions and um, assignments, right? Because they all have the rich content editor. The first thing that I wanna show you is my monitor is rather 
large, but what if you have a screen that looks like this? I'm sure sometimes you've opened up your canvas and this is all you get to see, right? And you're like, I can't really see what's in there. How do you make it larger? In this bottom right, there are two uh, lines of dots. All you have to do is click and drag that down and that will expand the actual box that you get to view in your Canvas editor. So I find that really helpful when I want to have more real estate. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. What else? Let's talk about how we get images onto our page. We can get images one of two ways. We can click on the image icon over here in the top right with a little picture of an icon and I can either upload an image from my computer, right? So I would click on upload here and I would find where my pictures are and then I would go ahead and upload it, right? I wanna make sure I'm including the alt text. Bonus point for whoever can describe what alt text is. Do I have a volunteer? It describes the picture. It describes the picture for whom? The one that you're, oh, for uh, students who are using screen readers. Exactly. So there are students who actually will view our pages using a screen reader and a screen reader will read to them what it is is on the screen. Obviously you can't read a picture. So the screen reader instead will read alt text. So in this one, I'm going to say Deanna Gossett profile. All right, so that's my profile picture. And I'm gonna click on submit. If I wanted to, I could also use Unsplash. Unsplash, as we mentioned before, allows you to search for terms and it'll give you some pictures. So if I didn't wanna use my profile picture and I wanted to use that instead, I could call this generic profile, right? And I never wanna really say picture of generic, profile because the screen reader will read the word picture. So you don't want it to say picture of generic profile picture, right? I'm just going to describe it in words. And then I would click on submit. Oh my gosh, it's terribly large. What can I do about that? Well, if you click back on the image and you click on image options, you'll have this little size option here and you can choose small, medium, large, extra large, or custom. I like to choose small, because it makes it uniform in size. Um, so that's what, one way to get images in. You also can click up here and under insert image and you have the same options. Course images allow you to add images that are already in your course. So that is how you get images. Any questions on that before we move to videos? I have a question. Um, when, when I do the images for a quiz, I don't wanna give, <laughs> You know, in biology, they have to recognize uh, organisms or, or structures. So if I say what exactly is there, this is the answer to my quiz. Let me ask you something. If I had a picture of an amoeba, right? And I, I, I'm really doing bad with bio because it was the only class I ever got to see it. But if I were to describe it as a squiggly figure <laughs> with one circular dot in the middle. I don't know. I'm sure that's not how you would describe it. Would that give the answer away? Um, well, um, I, I, so I need to describe exactly what is seen there. Okay. And, you know, it's, it's really hard because you have like sometimes very specific, you know, uh, very specific structure or very specific, uh, you know, point that if they also never seen the, an image like the, I mean, you can't really do that quiz without visual. It just, you know, and the thing is this, that if there is a blind person in a class, that's a different story, you know that, and then you have to adapt maybe to find a way, um, you know, but I, I adapted, for example, to people with color blindness and just, uh, pointed the color of the image mm -hmm. or the part of the image. But for a completely a blind person, I'm not really sure even how to get started on that, especially in the remote environment. 
So the answer that I would give you would be to describe it to the best of your ability, right? So I'm sure you would do better than a squiggly creature with a big dot in the middle. Um, but so you would describe it to the best of your ability and then you would reach out to D DSPS if you had a specific student who had vision issues or a specific issue to get additional support for helping that student in particular. Does that make sense? Yeah, but I have to do it anyway, even if I don't have any person that is... Yes, okay. yes, you have to do it anyway. And so that's why I said you would just describe it to the best of your ability without giving away the answer. So you would describe what you see, a squiggly creature with a big dot in the middle. I'm sure it's not, that. that's not yeah. what that is, but that's what you would do. And then if you had a student who had those accommodations, you would work with their counselor to help them further. But for your typical students, that's exactly what you're gonna do. You're gonna describe what you would see on the screen. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say amoeba, but I would describe what it looks like. Now, if it, if it was an amoeba and I didn't care that they knew it was amoeba, of course I would say amoeba. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. I, I have a question, are you ready? Sure, yes. Can I write more than one line of text to the right of the image? Absolutely. You can write one line of text, but there is a certain amount of characters, maybe like 140, 150. Anna, do you remember off the top of your head? Uh, the number of characters to include for the image, the alt text? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. Usually they said about two sentences. Okay. So if it's anything longer than that, what you can do is you can include a link in the alt text to another page that would give a more lengthy description. And those, those specific accommodations would be made for student, if you have a student in the class, right? If you're just doing it for our general population, a regular description would be fine. But uh, is the regular description available to the students um, in addition to the image? If they look at, so, so the answer is, if they're really, really smart and they know how to look at code, mm -hmm. I have to teach web design. And so you can look at the code of a web page. I won't show you because you'll get like a headache. Um, and so in the code, it will show you the, the alt text. So if they can go to inspect and look at the code, absolutely. But they have mm -hmm. to be pretty advanced to do that. Okay. Otherwise it's just gonna be the screen readers. Um, oh, this, is, this is Ryan. I just want to mention something quickly. Mm -hmm. um, say you don't have any alt text, you could go to the URL for the actual image. Uh, sometimes there's already text there and you can just copy that into your alt text. So it might be a quick way for you to add alt text. You know, um, I, I know it's probably better to describe the image, but if you're, if you're, if you have to get this done quickly, um, that might be a way to do that mm -hmm. as well. You bring up a great point. Um, if you actually have images that are coming from URL, you, you want to try as much as you can to download the images on your computer and re-upload them into Canvas, because a lot of times those URLs will break, the content manager will take down the web page, and then the image is gone and you, there's nothing you can do at that point. And you'll have a lot of broken links like we talked about. Um, so as much as possible, try not to use URLs. Go ahead and download the image and, and go ahead and upload it like I showed you. But you make a great point about that. All right, we're getting close Anna, on time. Yes. One quick question um, coming from chat. Um, and Leslie is asking if the image is purely decorative. What do you put in the alt text? So there are two schools of thought on this question, Leslie, and it's a great question. Um, but the school of thought that I like to go with is, if I'm putting an image and it's decorative, say for instance, when I have my welcome class, I like a big welcome banner with lots of colors and balloons, right? Why do I put that picture there? Because I want my students to feel a sense of warmth and welcomeness, right? So why would I want my student who is looking at a screen reader to feel any different. So I will tend to, even in those images that serve decorative purposes for that, I will still say welcome banner with pretty balloons or something like that. Where I would use decorative is if let's say I just have a picture of a line 
right? And I'm using that line to separate content from another. Or I've got like a blue banner where it's just blue and it doesn't really do anything. That is what I would consider and what the school of thought that I go with um, would consider a completely decorative text. But if you're putting pictures in there because you wanna make it lively for your visual students, why wouldn't you wanna make it lively for your students who are on screen readers? Is my school of thought. There's the other school of thought who says, unless it's meaningful to the content, I mean, to the actual content, you can mark it as decorative. It just depends on, on where you fall on that argument. Absolutely. I tend to wanna to embellish and make everyone feel happy to be in class. All right. Let's move on. Next, we're going to get images, not images. We're going to get video into our um, into our links. I see a lot of people, they will go to YouTube, they'll grab a link and they'll paste it in. That is like not the best way to get videos into YouTube. If you're going to do YouTube and you know you want to paste it, you would embed it. But we have a really cool tool here. Um, and if you click on this little plug and click on view all and scroll down, you'll see that we have a YouTube video uploader. And this is really cool because it allows you to search for the video. Let's say we're doing tips, Canvas tips and tricks. It help if I could type. So it allows you to search for a video and I can just pick one that I like. And now I can return a link, embed small, medium, or large. I'm gonna go ahead and pick embed small. So what I like about doing it this way is that it already populates the YouTube video in my course. The students know there's a video there, they get to see it and it's really cool. You also can, if you've got your own video, you can upload using this little um, video icon where you can either upload and record, or if you've got something already stored in your course, you can use that. The other thing that I really like is Canvas Studio. If we go back here to this plug icon, I can use Canvas Studio to embed an, in, uh, a movie, and I can either do it from a YouTube link from, I can record right in here, or I can upload it from my computer. And I actually did a webinar on Canvas Studio. Um, if you want to send me an email, I can send you a link to that because it's got some really cool features, but that is another way that you can get videos into Canvas. All right, any questions? there aren't any questions on the in the chat all right before we leave content manager i want to talk about accessibility because we've talked about it a little bit but it's really super important and as kevin mentioned we lost um ally which was really neat if you guys didn't see it it used to give you sort of like a report mm -hmm. on how everything was in your class but it also could break it give you little icons on your pages to say this was accessible or not, like green was good, red was not. Um, and we pretty much lost that, which is, is kind of unfortunate. What we have now is the Canvas Accessibility Checker, which is this little, somebody told me this was a Da Vinci icon, which shows you how much culture I got growing up in the Bronx. I thought it was a man in a circle. Um, but this little man in the circle is the Canvas Accessibility Checker. And with accessibility, less, uh, more is definitely more. So we want to use as many resources as we can to check accessibility because not one can get everything, right? So even though we have Canvas has its own accessibility checker, it doesn't necessarily do the job on its own by itself. I'm going to go ahead and open up another course that I have um, because the way my course this uh, dev site was created, it doesn't have, it doesn't have the course that I want to, the page that I want to show you, which is Pope Tech. So our accessibility checker that we're using now is something called Pope Tech. And Pope Tech is, I don't know if you guys can see right down here, where the save and cancel button, there is another little, this is supposed to be a P icon, right? This is the Canvas accessibility checker. This one is Pope Tech. And this will tell you kind of what errors and alerts that you have on your page. So this one says, hey, you've got five errors and errors are in red. 
they need to be fixed and uh, alerts are in yellow. And what are the errors? Well, I've got these links, they're blue and the contrast is not good enough. Now, I have to give you guys a disclaimer. We know the contrast in Canvas isn't good enough. However, we also know that it is a lot of work for all the instructors to change every color link in Canvas. So there are currently the CVC OEI, which is an organization that works on accessibility, is trying to get Canvas to change this color link so that it is accessible. So they're saying instructors don't necessarily need to change the color of the links right now because that would be a lot of work. And if Canvas just made the change, it would make it accessible and that would be all good. So as long as we're specifically looking at these links, there's nothing you need to worry about. So my five errors are actually all the Canvas blue links. And so I can ignore them for now. Now, if I had another color here, right, that wasn't, that didn't have enough contrast, that would show up. So now I added this little word extra in yellow and that's saying, hey, that color isn't working. You need to go ahead and change it. So that would be an instance where I would wanna change this color. And what's nice about Pope Tech, it is allows you to fix the errors in um, Canvas. And so Hadi is actually giving a webinar on Wednesday at 1 p.m. on Pope Tech and how to use it. So I'm not gonna go into it here but I wanted you guys to know where it was and how it worked. Any questions there? Uh, if you put it on bold, uh, would that fix it? Because that's what I usually do. I, I make all these links in bold. Oh, you mean these links? Yeah. Um, and then see. it kind of like look a little bit more standing out. That's what I usually do. Yeah, let's see if that makes it any better. Nope. Oh. Mm -mm. No, it's a known issue, like I said. Okay. Um, and, and we can just ignore the links, but this extra would definitely need to change. If you guys are interested in the Pope Tech, absolutely check out Hadi's webinar on Wednesday. Um, we also will have another product that was similar to Ally called You Do It coming online sometime in the middle of the semester which will be able to check your entire site because Pope Tech just checks page by page and it doesn't you know, um, do the entire site. So we'll send you an email when that comes out. All right, any question on content management before I move on to assignment management? So, so wait, you, you want us to do both the Ally oh. and the Pope Tech for each one, each page? Yes, yes, yes. And, announcement and the re written. Yes, and the reason is, is that the Canvas Accessibility Checker is really good with some things like tables, not so great with other things. And, you know, other checkers are good with some things and not so great with other things. Like, it, there's no perfect machine that mm -hmm. can check all of it. So it's kind of like, you know, more is more. Okay. Um, Deanna, if I can add, I'm doing the um, Canvas Accessibility uh, webinar tomorrow mm -hmm. at 2.30. So we're going to be going over what we call the big seven. There's certain things we go over like headers, lists, color contrast, um, tables, things like that. And so we're gonna be doing that tomorrow. And then Hadi's uh, presentation will be on Pope Tech. And so I think right now between, you know, the, the Canvas pages um, accessibility checker and Pope Tech will be okay, but yeah, Ally will no longer be um, will be useful for us since it's it's no long, longer available. Thank you. I forgot to mention that Anna. Thank you. Um, Anna is going to do that great great webinar tomorrow, so you guys should definitely check that out. All right, so we're moving on to course management, and so I'm going to show you how to change your dates for all of your assignments in one place using two different methods. We already saw when we copied the content over from one course to another, we were able to change the date. And if you do the math right there, most of the dates should be fine. Mm -hmm. However, I always check them before I publish. And so you can do two things. The first is I'm gonna go to settings and I'm going to make sure adjust all is installed. So I'm gonna drag it up to the top because Adjust All allows me to 
see all of the dates of my assignments, my announcements, my discussions and everything. But the other place that I have to do that is to go in assignments itself. So I only have these assignments here. And if I click on these three dates, these three dots in the top right, I'll see a little button that says edit assignment date. And so if I click on that and I choose the assignments that I want to edit, right? I can change the date right here. So this is really cool because it has all of the assignments in one place. However, I prefer a just all. The reason being is that your announcements are not going to be here. Your modules are not going to be here, but your assignments will, right? And my discussions and things like that. So I like it, especially if you're trying to streamline things, but I prefer to use a just all because it has everything and it breaks it up the way in which my modules are. So let me go ahead and show you guys that. Pope Tech is just a different accessibility checker. Um, so there's different ones. Ally was an accessibility checker. Pope Tech is one. You Do It is another. Yeah. Okay. They're just different. Yeah, different checkers that do the same thing, just in different ways. All right, so this is a just all. And what I like about a just all is a just all basically takes a snapshot of your class and modules and then it allows you to change the dates. So as you can see, we've got the three modules that we have here. I've got my Canvas orientation and my class orientation and then my getting started orientation. So if I wanted to put dates on my modules, I could do it the way that I showed you guys in modules, Bernice, but I also could do it here. I simply could come to adjust all and I could say lock until. And I like this because I literally will put module one, unlock week one, module two, unlock week two, module three, unlock week three, Kevin. And I'm literally not unlocking these week by week. Like it's just awesome. It's kind of like set it and forget it. So I spend a lot of time at the beginning of the semester getting my courses set up and then they just go ahead and run. And all I have to do is grade and interact with my students. But not only do I have the modules, as you can see, I've got the assignments here as well. So I've got when they're due, when they're open from, um, until, and if I had a quiz and I wanted to show and hide answers, I could include that as well. Um, but what I like about this that the assignment part doesn't have is the announcement. So if I was just doing the actual um, assignments, I couldn't do the modules and I also couldn't do the announcements. So literally I'll be like week one, January 3rd, week two, a week later, week three, a week later, right? And so basically my course is really set up from the beginning. Any questions here? Anybody know what this little mute icon is or icon with a slash and a sound? What does that mean? Anybody know? I'll give you bonus points. Five bonus points for whomever can tell me. Mute, mute all. Mute all. What is it muting? Uh, for, the, for, the, for the students listening? No, it's muting the assignment grading. Mm. which is crazy. So when I copy over assignments, sometimes Canvas will mute the assignment, which means I will get the grades in and my students won't see them. Mm. So why would you, why, why, why would it do this? Well, sometimes we grade half the class and we didn't grade the other half. We wanna wait until we're finished with everybody. So there's a mute option. And so you have that available to you, but it's important that if you see that it's muted, you wanna unmute it because you could grade them and your students won't know. I think the first time I taught, like it was halfway through the semester and my students were like, we haven't gotten any grades. And I'm like, yeah, I graded everything. All my assignments were muted. So even though I was grading them, they weren't getting it. So if you see that here or in the grade book, that's what that is. And you wanna make sure your assignments are unmuted. What, what about the exams, same thing? Same thing. Oh, same thing. Oh, they won't see their yeah, grades. I had some that I have no idea why the students wouldn't. <laughs> well, I think the default setting sometimes when Canvas copies from semester to semester is it will turn it on. It doesn't happen all the time. Canvas can be flaky or finicky or touchy. I don't know why it happens sometimes and doesn't happen. But I want you guys to know if it is what it's, you know, what it is and how to fix it. Now, for whatever reason, it's not unmuting there. 
So what you could do is you could go to Gradebook. Oh, it's actually not muted here. So if it was muted here, if it were muted, let's see. If it were muted, I would see a little icon here. So none of these are muted. So that's what that little icon is for. All right, so any questions on adjust style? One other thing I want to show you is how to message students who haven't submitted their assignments. So here we are in the grade books, and here's my husband and myself in my class, right? And so let's say it's uh, Sunday night, and this assignment is due Sunday night, and they haven't actually submitted it yet. I could click on these three dots, and I could click on message students who, and I can choose either haven't submitted, scored less than, or more than, in this instance, I'm going to click on haven't submitted. So I'm gonna say, hey, please submit your quiz before 11.59 p.m. tonight. There you go. So now whoever didn't submit this quiz is going to get that message. And what's really nice is that they think the message is coming directly to them. They didn't know that I sent it to everyone in the class. So I like to do this, especially in the beginning of the semester, week number one and two, especially I do it with all the assignments. And then right around sort of like, um, what's the date, the mandatory enrollment date, right before we start dropping students, I want to kind of nudge them again, like, hey, but I also do it sometimes just to check in, like, hey, you're not submitting your assignments. Is there something going on? Is there something I can help you with, right? This is a nice way to do that. Or if you've got students who are not performing well on quizzes, maybe you want to say, hey, you scored less than, you know, five points. Maybe you want to send them a message. Hey, do you want to meet me in office hours or something like that? So this is a really neat way to kind of connect with your students and make sure they're doing their work. All right. Any other questions? I'm looking over here at my agenda. Diana, we're at 350. Yes. We are. All right, yes. I'm gonna show you two other things really quickly before I let you go. And it is how to extend an assignment for a student, uh, how to extend an assignment or how to add time. And those are really, really easy. So we're gonna go to quizzes and I can either click on edit and here is my regular due date. I can click on add and I can choose the student and give them a specific separate date. And this is the same thing in assignments, right? So I can do that. Or I can do something with Accommodate HQ. And Accommodate HQ is something that is like um, Adjust All. It is an LTI, I mean, you can drag it to the top. And it will allow me to, let's say I know I need to give all my student uh, quizzes double time on all my quizzes. So I'm gonna go to Accommodate HQ. Of course, it's not gonna work because I need to finish. Come on, Accommodate HQ, let's go here. Accommodate HQ, and it allows me to, I can do it by assignment or by student. So let's say I know I need to give Deanna an extra 30 minute on each attempt, an extra attempt, right? So that means for every assignment, every quiz, Deanna's gonna get an extra 30 minutes and an extra attempt. So that's really cool. You don't have to go in and do it by assignment anymore. All right, so the last thing in the extras, in the handout, I'm gonna go ahead and add it in the chat box again. The last thing is all of the um, support numbers, right? So we have a Canvas faculty shell that you can self-enroll in. You can um, use the Canvas Commons or Canvas Community Help Search, Canvas Support. I've given all the numbers and the link in those agenda. So any questions before we head out? No? All right, well, you guys have been wonderful. I apologize for keeping you five minutes over. I've added the agenda again for those of you who were late. Make sure you type your name in the chat box. We do have to take attendance. And I really appreciate your attending. Deanna, my only question is, where will we find this recording? Are you gonna send it to us or do we have to go look for it? Um, so... So all the recordings will be um, uploaded on YouTube, but that's kind of like a process. So I think if you maybe want the rough version of it before we upload it on YouTube, you can either reach out to Deanna or you can reach out to me. 
Okay, thanks for the help. Thank you, I appreciate okay. it. This was great. And the DE team, and we're here to help you all semester. So please email us if you have any questions. All right, talk to you guys later. Have a great rest of your day. All right, thank you, Deanna. Thank you thank so you. much. Dan. Thank you very much. Bye. Right. Bye. Bye, Thank Caleb. You. Bye, Lloyd. Bye, Bernice. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. I got to click Bye. on the leave button. Got to find the leave button. <laughs> Bye, Lorenzo. There's the leave button. There we go. Thank leave. you, Anna. I appreciate it. Thank you, Nancy. All right. Let's kind of stop. Bye, Thank Lorenzo. You.